Yeah. YouTube fan community, ACDC fans, random people on the internet. My name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about ACDC's debut album, internationally anyway, High Voltage, released on Atco Records. Um, I haven't talked about ACDC on my channel much at all, beyond one video where I made like a uh, albums that were big to me in high school thread where I talked about the uh, If You Want Blood album. When I was in high school, ACDC was a huge band for me. I was really into these guys. Um, I don't listen to them as much anymore. They pop up every once in a while, but um, and a lot of it's a little bit of nostalgia there, but sometimes I'm really like, all right, I need some ACDC. Um, that said, I have never come across this album, uh, an original before. I've come across the reissue from 2003 a few times, but never an original. So once I found it, it was five bucks. I had to grab it. It was super cheap, and it's in okay condition. It's a couple of scuffs on the cover. It's a little bit dirty, but it's ACDC. It's rock and roll. It's fine. Um, it was so fun to replay this album and kind of like get reacquainted with it because um, it's been a long time since I've heard the whole thing so it was really fun uh, to kind of go back down memory lane a little bit and go back to high school and remember playing this album um, so yeah this came out April 30th uh, 1976 on uh, Atlantic and May 14th on Echo um, same year but as I listened to this album, I noticed a theme running through this thing, and I'll mention that at the end um, to kind of sum this thing up. But I want to basically sum up really briefly what led ACDC to this point. So ACDC for, was from Australia. Um, they had two albums at this point, High Voltage and TNT. Um, High Voltage, the first album, was very much different from what this was. You know, songs like Soul Stripper, You Ain't Got a Hold On Me, Baby Please Don't Go. It was kind of like a glam rock inspired album. Whereas TNT was basically like this album. Uh, most of the songs from TNT are on this thing. Um, and they really discovered that like big rock guitar sound. That worked for them really well. So um, the record label decided that like, yeah, we should probably put this out internationally. So they kind of combined most of the TNT album, took a couple songs off, took some songs from the High Voltage album, and then made this to make one cohesive set. And it really works well, it flows really well, excellent tracks on this thing, it's a lot of fun. So, that said, um, track one on here, it's a long way to the top, if you wanna rock and roll. Um, it's just an awesome rock song about trying to make it big in the music industry, um, or just as a band in general, playing local pubs. Um, Bond's voice on this thing is super smooth and fun and just full of like, hungry energy. I mean, you, you get that vibe, like, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, but like, we're gonna do it. Like, you get that energy from them. Um, and you feel that energy, that excitement in their voices and the way they're playing is so, like, this upbeat and in your face. Um, you know, really energetic opener. Um, and there's bagpipes on it, which I think Bon actually played. Um, he didn't play them, like, as a kid. He, he, was, he played drums in a, uh, in a bagpipe band. Um, but that was enough for the management to be like, yeah, you can play bagpipes. And so he learned how to do it and, and did it. Um, he even played them live too, which I guess was a little bit difficult to try and match up with guitars, but um, he pulled it off. But um, I like the walking bass line on this track. I, I love the drums. I mean, Phil Rudd's an amazing drummer. Um, and uh, the really big, chunky guitar riffs just punch you over and over again. It's just a really fun rock and roll song. Uh, rock and roll singer. I hear it pays well. It's an excellent second track on this thing. More of the chugging riffs, but you get a really dry production on this song, which I think lends to the like garage rock aesthetic that it has. Um, and it follows the first song really well. Like, you kind of like get a story going on here. Hey, lead into something here. Um, you know, it's about making it in a band. Simple as that. I love the shaker in the background. I love the solo. Um, just a very fun, upbeat song. And the drums are cool too. The drums do a couple of things with the fills throughout this thing. Um, I mean, Phil's drums playing is always pretty straightforward and standard, but once in a while he throws in a little trick here and there, and that kind of keeps your attention going. Uh, the Jack, Gonorrhea. Yep, that's what it's about. Um, the live version of this song is way more vulgar and way more uh, uh, disgusting. This one is definitely cleaned up, and it's about basically like a card game where you know kings and queens and jacks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they kind of change it around to be about that. But it's that slow burner kind of blues rock, um, really sharp 
acerbic guitar playing on this thing, the really expressive solo on this thing. Um, it was a live favorite for years. It was always in their set list. But yeah, um, the studio version is okay. Um, it comes to live. It comes to life when it's live. It comes to live when it's life. Um, which leads into live wire. Um, really cool pounding bass opens this thing, just thumping along, really thundering away. Um, and then you get those guitar bursts, the hi-hat comes in, and then everybody jumps in at once. And it's just like, you know, stick this in your fuse box. It's just it's so ripping by the middle, and it just blows up. I mean, the way they just, live wire! It's just so fun. Um, it gets really loud and raucous by the end. It's a really cool track. It really is fun. Um, side 2 opens with TNT. Oi, oi. And I love that badass riff. Um, Bond is declaring himself more powerful than anything. And in this case, it's a, it's a case of TNT. Uh, he's dynamite. It's about to explode. I mean, um, I love the charging bass throughout this thing. This and Livewire are excellent bass songs. Um, and the chorus in TNT is, is so memorable and so fun to sing along to. I mean, it's a classic rock staple. And it, maybe it's been worn out a lot by FM radio. But... In the context of the album, I think it works really well. Um, Can I Sit Next to You, Girl? was actually one of their very first songs, if not their first song, with their original singer, Dave Evans? Yes? Yeah. No, Mark, no, Dave. There's a couple of Evans in this band. I'm getting myself confused. Um, their version, the original version, is very glam rock inspired and... Um, I, I like it a lot because it's very un ACDC, which I think makes it fascinating. But this version with Bond, I think, is is cool. There's like the whole like Batman esque, very cool guitar line, Dick Dale sort of thing. Um, the use of empty space throughout this track is fun, and I think Bond doing the lead vocal on this thing is great. You know, there's cool build up towards the end. Um, it's just a fun song. I like the big chorus at the end. Um, it's definitely early ACDC and something they would like never tackle again, melody wise or lyrical, lyrically wise. Um, so it definitely has like a bit of a naive sort of presence, but I like that. I think it's kind of fun to hear them growing as a band and still, still being young at writing songs. I think having something like that on here shows their age, you know, when they were just young writing a song. Um, Little Lover, I always get a slight, like, honky-tonk women, Rolling Stones vibe from this thing. Um, it's got a really bright, rubbery bass line, but I love the guitars on this thing. Um, kind of a late-night barroom kind of, like, sadness to them. Um, but the guitars in the chorus, that down, 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 like, really cool. Um, the splashes of guitar, of, um, of cymbals come in at just the right places. Really good solo on this thing. I love that solo a lot. Um, then you get She's Got Balls, which is just a classic of this album. Um, you know, apparently Bond wrote this for his wife, because his wife was like, you don't write songs about me, you don't write love songs, write me a song, and then he wrote She's Got Balls, and then promptly got divorced, as the rumor goes. Um, but, what an amazing song, I mean, it's just one of those, like, super tight production, super tight production on this song. Um, yeah, I love the ending a lot, it just ends really abruptly. Very cool song. And then you get Higher Voltage. It's only rock and roll, but I like it. You know, it's just this big, huge, high voltage rock and roll. And they wrote that, you know, with the chords, ACDC, which is kind of cool. Um, I like it. I like the shaker on this thing. I like the energy. It's a really fleshed out, well-written song. Um, and which leads me to my theory about this album, which it may have been done before somewhere online or in an article at some point in the last... 40 odd years, but um, it kind of struck me as I was playing this that this is a uh, a concept album. Hands down, it's a concept album. It starts off with a, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Like, hey, we want to be in a band. We want to make it happen. How do we do this? Um, well, I'm going to be a rock and roll singer. I'm going to be a rock and roll star. going to, you know, be a rock and roll singer. going to be a rock and roll star. Um, you know, so like, you, you want to be in the band? All right, now you're in the band. Now you're playing shows, you're meeting people, and it leads it to the jack. Well, you're in a rock and roll band, and you've caught gonorrhea. Check one for being in a rock and roll band. Um, you know, you get over that, and then you start doing live wire. Um, you know, just to show you're back on stage again, and you're like, everything's cool, you're, you're, you're 
charged up, you're ready to go. Um, then you get TNT. Now you're feeling confident. Now you've had a hit single. Um, you know, you're on the charts. People know who you are. Your, your songs are selling. Um, it's getting harder and harder to take the bus to work every day because people are recognizing you. Like, you know, you're, you're a prominent uh, figure. You're a celebrity. And then you get, can I sit next to you, girl? So here we are on stage again. And you see someone in the audience and you're like, hey, I, we should meet. Let's talk. Let's hang out. Can I sit next to you, girl? You're getting famous, but you still want to meet people. Um, then little lover. That person you met becomes your lover. Now you're, you're together. You, you made it happen. Now you're a thing. You're a couple. You're, you're in a relationship. Um, and then you want to write a song about her. So you write, she's got pulse. <laughs> like, hey, it worked. You wrote a song about your girlfriend. It happened. And then you end the whole show with high voltage to show like like your your journey has happened. You were hungry. You, you became a band. You went through the ups and downs. You met people. You had hit singles. You're playing rock and roll for people. You've gone through hell and back. It's high voltage rock and roll. You made it. Um, and that's my theory that this album is a concept album. I mean, it's sequenced perfectly to tell a story. Maybe it's not meant to do that, but in my eyes, it totally freaking does. Here is the back cover with a bunch of notes, basically, from people saying, Hey, Mal, um, you know, your guitars were loud and you were snorting and doing stupid stuff in class. Or Phil smashed a drumstick over my daughter's head. Or, um, you know, Bon, you're hitting on my girl. Like, that kind of stuff. Like, just rock and roll fodder, basically. Um, let me show you the inside. This does have the original Atlantic Group label, the boring kind of greenish brownish thing um, and then the yellow Acto label so the record itself is a little bit scratched up and a little bit wobbly but uh, it plays fine for five bucks I, I couldn't say no to it um, like I said ACDC was a big band for me in high school and it's it's fun to put them on once in a while kind of kind of just like zone out and uh, you know I'm a sucker for big rock riffs, like, I'll admit, I, I love big rock guitars. Um, so yeah, like I said, this album was cold from two albums to make one cohesive, universal album for the rest of the world outside of Australia. Um, and then from here on out, things just kept getting bigger and bigger for them. Dirty Deeds came out, and then um, Let There Be Rock, Power Age, How It Hell, just it kept moving and moving from there. So um, this is a really, really strong debut album. And um, I think it really shows the band at an early peak where they were just so full of that desire to be on stage and make rock and roll music and prove themselves and give an amazing live show. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all I gotta say about it. Uh, I do, I love this album. I think it's great. It's, it's one of the best debut albums, I think, of, of rock history. Because uh, it's pretty solid. It, it really isn't a bad track on this thing. Bar for the studio version of the Jack is kind of meh, but um, I'd probably give this thing like a 7 out of 10. Um, not my favorite album by then. I, I still think like If You Want Blood or Power Age and Flick, Flick of the Switch are probably like my favorite ones. But um, it's still a good album, and I like the energy and the spirit that is captured here. Um, even though Phil doesn't play drums on half of the songs, but it's okay. So my name is Giggins. This has been Album Reviews with ACDC High Voltage rock and roll um i'm going with a six or seven out of ten there we go thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video and um that's it bye bye